Come and join me if you want, Mike. There we are, Peter's going uh, next. Emma. Morning, Emma. My name but it's very noisy this morning, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's building today. Uh, I'll move myself so you don't have to hear. Uh, no. <coughs> Mavis is just arriving. Oh, Good. right. Good. She didn't get the time wrong then. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, if she did, she's come back for the second time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mavis. Hello. Yeah. Oh, Neil. Neil. Our oh, morning, folks. Now, now Neil Mason has arrived all the way from uh, sunny Portugal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lovely. Chucking it down, everyone. chucking it down, Portugal. All right. Wow. Oh, no. yeah. and, and in Wales, too. And in Wales, too. Yeah, lovely to see you all. So many of us gathered this morning that uh, my computer is showing three screens full of smiling faces. Well, I say full of smiling faces. I can see one or two of you who haven't yet got the smile on this morning. Is that because uh, <laughs> there's no excuse? You've had an extra hour in bed and uh, yeah. you should have been in bed, in bed on by now. But uh, <clears throat> fantastic to see you all and um, chatting away there. Love to know whether Emma's got a flute hidden underneath her, uh, underneath her desk there. Because uh, uh, not not a not a flute or a violin. Have you got your violin hidden there, uh, Emma? Ah, oh, there you go. She is. She brings her own <laughs> musical instrument with her, which is uh, awesome, isn't it? <clears throat> and um, to be honest, what what I would say to you is because uh, somebody spotted that last week, Emma, uh, that uh, that you know w when we go to the song and, and go to the hymn, um, you know we, we mute everybody. <clears throat> so that uh, well so that you don't have to put up with my voice for a start but um but i would really encourage you to sing and worship in whatever way you want to uh, and if that means that you've got some sort of instrument that that, that you love to play then uh, well join emma in doing so and just play along to it um and use those songs to worship uh, in any way you can but so lovely to see you all um I, I wonder if we should be doing this in church when we actually physically come back together you know let, let people like um like may bring a mug of coffee with her on a on a sunday morning or uh, <laughs> ah, you see everything that goes on on the screen can be spotted may uh, or whether we should all whether we should all take a turn and, and sort of say good morning to everybody and then somebody else stands up and says good morning to everybody and wouldn't it be beautifully chaotic if we if we did that um, there we go we still got people joining us this morning um and we're up to about uh 46 or more screens oh, wow so uh, oh. yeah it is, it is a bit wow isn't it really yeah so, uh, forgive me if i don't spot everybody here but <clears throat> we will record today's service so that it can go up uh, online later for anybody that couldn't make it uh to to join in um in their own time later on but it's it's fantastic just to be to be together live isn't it and uh, see one another's faces and see who's sort of staring at the screen and who's looking out the window and who's having a, a cuppa and uh, whether whether couples have uh, have joined together as couples on a screen or whether they've got separate computers <laughs> in different rooms and they're and they're not talking to each other but um wherever you are this morning really lovely to see you we're going to uh, we're going to come and worship God together. Um, we're going to do that uh, with me, probably me doing um, most of the speaking, I'm afraid to say, but um, but one one or two others and some songs to sing as well. So uh, yeah, let's spend the next uh, 30, 40 minutes uh, praising God and being thankful uh, for one another. Wow, I've got a, I've got a screen with three people on it this morning. That'll be the the Thomas household. Good morning, folks. Welcome. Um, <clears throat> maybe there's a there's a challenge to see how many people we can we can get on. But uh, yeah, welcome to one and all. Welcome from uh, sunny Wales and uh, uh, rainy Portugal. Uh, and uh, and let's worship God together. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to mute everybody 
uh, for a moment, Karen, if that's possible. And I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to say some words to. So I'm just going to share my screen and hopefully uh, share some words on the screen for you to see. And I would encourage you to, to speak them out. So here we go. Good morning, one and all. Let me put this on a full screen. <clears throat> and then hopefully you can see some of that. Welcome to Mount Pleasant at home, from my home to yours and your home to everybody else's. Let us worship God. So I say these words and then you say the words that are in yellow. So I say, come to God, who is your refuge and your fortress. In you, in you I will put my trust. Come to God, who answers when we call. In you, I will put my trust. Come to God, who is with us. In you, I will put my trust. And then... These words, our declaration of who our God is, and you respond in this way. Our God is good. In him, we will rejoice. Our God is gracious. In him, we will delight. Our God is great. In him, we will trust. Okay, let's pray together, shall we? Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you are the creator and source of all life. And we come to worship and praise you in this wonderful yet strange way. This way that we're beginning to get used to, but don't want to get too used to, for we still long to be with one another. But we are, in a sense, with one another, and we are, in a real sense, with you. You are the great and awesome God and <clears throat> out of chaos and darkness you spoke words that brought order and light and life and we marvel at such evidence of your greatness and glory and yet ultimately your glory was seen in Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour who laid aside all that was glorious and took on human flesh in him, we have gained an understanding of what power and glory is, for he revealed through his life what true power is based on. It is based on loving others and empowering others. And so we marvel at the depth of your care and love for us, our gracious God, as you reveal yourself to us in and through Jesus, and as you challenge us and encourage us to love one another by empowering one another, by equipping one another, by encouraging one another. And so may our time today, this morning, in this strange and weird way, be one where we do feel encouraged, empowered and equipped to do all that you invite us to do. But ultimately, we praise and bless you for all that you have done for us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me see if I can stop sharing my screen now and we will have a song of praise and worship. And it's a uh, <clears throat> oh, sorry. Stop share. That's better. And uh, this is a, a great hymn. It's um, it's a recording from uh, a church called Grace Community Church. Uh, some, somewhere way out in, in, in the west of, of uh, California, I think. Uh, and it's a congregation. So you'll be able to imagine that you're part of a, a big congregation singing this well-known hymn of praise. I need to share my screen for you to see it. Uh, but it's the hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. So if Emma wants to grab her violin and, uh, and play along, to it in the background and if you want to to sing along to, to this congregational song then i'd really encourage you to do so so let's uh, let's enjoy this hymn together this morning
What an awesome hymn. I hope you agree. Uses some uh, wonderful ancient words. Uh, and I hope that that was something that you were able to uh, join in and rejoice in. So we're going to have a Bible reading now. And uh, Anne is going to read to us. So if you've got a Bible with you to hand, be helpful. Not necessary. Don't worry if you haven't. Uh, just enjoy these words. Psalm 42. So the Psalms is a book in the Old Testament. And uh, we're going to have Psalm 42. And we're going to think a little bit about this Psalm uh, a little bit later. So Psalm 42. Thanks very much, Anne. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God. For the living God, where can I go and meet with God? My Can I just check whether anybody can hear Anne? No, you can't. No. OK, that's fine. I'll tell her afterwards. OK, not sure. Try again. Um, oh, um, are you back with us, Anne? I don't know whether Anne is. We're having slight problems between my screen and her screen. So uh, we'll we'll come back to that uh, in, in a moment. Oh, yes. Why don't you come back and do it here? Shall I, oh, shall I get her to do it from my screen? Yeah, let's do that, shall we? There we go. <laughs> I'll start again. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I shall start again with Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with a multitude, leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones must suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. Whoop. There we go. Swap screens. Thank you very much, Anne. Sorry about that, folks. Hope you were able to... Uh, to follow I want to refer to that uh, a little bit later but we're going to come to a time of prayer now uh, and uh, I'm sure there are probably um, people in your mind this morning um, for whom well they're right at the forefront of your mind for various reasons for, for reasons that bring you joy or reasons that, that cause you concern or anxiety um, so let's uh, take a moment uh, to pause to think of such folk and then I'll lead us in some uh, vocal 
verbal prayers this morning. Is that okay? So let's just pause uh, for a second or two, be mindful of those people uh, that we know and love and care for, and uh, come to our God in prayer. Let's pray together. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we, we are here and we pause to pray, mindful of those in our mind, but rejoicing that we can bring them to you, our awesome and loving God. We can entrust to you those who are dearest to us. In fact, we put our hope, our faith and our trust in you for you to care for and look after those whom we know and love. For some of them are very close to us physically. Some are many, many miles away. And yet their presence is very real to us as they are very much in our minds. We come to you in the midst of a world in which we are wearied by uncertainty and restrictions perhaps even frustrated by our inability to cope and overcome. We're concerned for loved ones and vulnerable strangers, bewildered and unclear about the road that lies ahead. And yet we come in hope this morning because in Jesus, we see light that overcomes the darkness, resurrection and life springing out of execution and brutality. For salvation was born in the midst of human chaos and suffering, broken and abandoned, yet healed and restored, Christ brings hope. And so we come in hope. We come in hope and rely on his promises, which are unsaleable and unchanging. And even in the midst of creation's deepest groanings, we hear the song of eternity's dawn. We hear the song of hope. God of hope. Though our hope may sometimes falter, Hold us fast in your eternal love. As we pray this morning for those who are in hospital today, we are mindful of many. Some would come and we would name Linda Price today. As Linda goes through an operation, possibly even at this very moment in time, we pray for her and others undergoing operations. That she and those others we know would know your presence and peace, your healing, and a return to good and better health. We pray too for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, those feeling that acute pain of recent loss, those feeling the nagging ache from times past, you are a good and gracious God, and we pray for your eternal comfort into those who we know and love and are undergoing this at this time. You are the great God of hope. Help us to never forget that our hope is secure, for it remains founded not on our earthly circumstances and experiences, but our hope rests in Christ and he is our sure foundation. And it's in his name that we've gathered today and in his name that we offer our prayers. Hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. We love to say the Lord's Prayer together, don't we? And it'd be great if we could have that moment of chaotic celebration where we all speak out the Lord's Prayer. And so maybe if we could all unmute ourselves i think help that to happen and uh, most of you will know the lord's prayer uh, don't worry if you don't we're all going to share it together in that wonderful way let's pray our father who is in heaven hallowed be thy name Give us a daily bread. 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 Give us a daily bread.
Amen. Amen. Wasn't that absolutely wonderfully chaotic? Yeah. <laughs> There are some of you smiling. Yay! Isn't it great that we can smile after saying the Lord's Prayer together? It's never been so beautifully chaotic as it is. Brilliant. To unmute myself and make sure that uh, you can hear me. Um, it wouldn't be church without a few notices, would it? Now, hey, you know, we haven't got a whole list of, uh, of things, but uh, one or two things that we do want to sort of keep you up to date with and let you know about. So uh, we do have uh, a Bible study on a Wednesday evening. So I'm leading Bible study on uh, Wednesdays at 7.30. Good number of you are joining me for that, which is terrific. We've had well, you know, more than 20 or so folk, 20, 24, 25 people. And uh, we're studying the book of Philippians. And, uh, and if you would like to come and join us for that, then there'll be a Zoom link that gets sent out or you can pick it up on Facebook or YouTube or somewhere like that. But if you want that, we can make sure that you're welcome to that. Now, last uh, week, uh, we announced a new little initiative uh, that Karen is going to be hosting. I'm going to put this up on uh, my screen if I can get it. Karen is going to uh, host uh, on Tuesday something that was going to be called Tuesday Tea Time. Tuesday Tea Time. So let me see if I can... Uh, share my screen here to show you this. So on Tuesday, join for a chat, bring your own tea and biscuits and coffee because you're going to be doing it uh, from your own living room or kitchen or dining room or whatever. Uh, again, it'll be via Zoom in this way, but it is good sometimes to be able to, to connect uh, and catch up with friends. And uh, Karen is going to be hosting that <clears throat> on Tuesday mornings at 10.30. We know, of course, that not everybody is able to make that time. Uh, some people uh, work, some people have other responsibilities. That's fine. Uh, just for those of you who want it and for those of you who are able to, to do so, uh, there's an opportunity for you. Um, I'm going to ask now Karen if she'd be willing to just uh, share something about uh, this little idea. Um, right. Okay. Mark, Mark did that the opposite way round to the way I thought he was going to do it. I thought I was doing coffee and he was doing big quiz. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but no worries. Um, so we're joining with Tear Fund on the 14th of November, which is a Saturday evening um, at 7.30. Um, it's to raise money uh, for Tear Fund to help uh, people that are in poverty. Um, and to help put an end to global hunger. It's for everyone. So that's you, your family, your friends, your dog, your cat, your rabbit, everything that's, uh, everybody that wants to come can join in. Um, the idea is you make a donation um, on our Just Giving fundraising page to join in. Uh, there's not a set fee. You put as much or as little as you can afford or you want to give. You can do that anonymously. Um, and, um, then on the night, we're going to run a quiz similar to what we do uh, generally in harvest time, uh, where the lovely Sarah Stockley does it for us for Churches Together. So it'll be a list of quizzes, a list of questions on different subjects. Um, halfway through, we'll watch a film uh, and then we'll finish off the, uh, the questions and then you'll add up your scores and we'll find a winner. Um, it seemed a nice way to come together um, in, in these times that we can't come together. Um, so um, it's something that we can do, a bit of fun. Um, you, get to, you get things like phone a friend if you make an extra donation or something like that. It'll be a, it'll be a nice night. So bring your own fish and chips, uh, your tea and coffee, and um, we'll mention it again next week. And the link will hopefully be going out uh, on the website and on the Facebook this week and Mark will hopefully include the link um, on his weekly email next week. That's it. Brilliant. Thanks, Karen. That's uh, that's really great. Really looking forward to that. That'll be um, that'll be uh, a lot of fun, I think, really. It'll be uh, a crazy experience, but uh, a lot of fun. Uh, so if you're able to gather um, 
in your appropriately social distanced type of way, whatever that means for you, then uh, that would be some, something good to get along to. Okay. Um, so if you've got your Bible with you, again, I um, want to encourage you to keep your finger in Psalm 42, because uh, I'll make mention of that. But fast forward to the end of the New Testament and see if you can find the little book called 1 John. Now, uh, 1 John is, uh, is just uh, three, three or four pages in most people's Bible, right towards the very end of the, uh, end of the Bible. In fact, it's uh, almost the last book. Uh, not quite, but almost the last book. And if you can find 1 John chapter 4, I would, uh, I'd really encourage you to, 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 to spot a particular verse that, uh, that I want you to have in your mind today. Now, the particular verse is 1 John chapter 4, and it's verse 4. So I don't know if you can see that, uh, but 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 if you've got that. And I'm going to read um, a few verses uh, at the, from the beginning of that chapter and, uh, and come to that point. So follow along with me as I read this little section and then, uh, then I've got something I want to share with you this morning. So it starts off by saying, dear friends. I, I love it when it says that. It's one of my favourite books of the Bible because I love to be on the receiving end of a dear friends message, you know. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not, does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and is now already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. I want to repeat that line because that's the one I want you to highlight this morning. I don't know whether you're a child of the highlighter age, as, as I've said that I am. But there you go. There's my highlighter pen this morning. And if I were to dare to highlight my Bible, that's the one. That's the line that I would want you to highlight today. There it is. The second half of verse four. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Right now. Um, I give homework to my Bible study group on a Wednesday. That might put some of you off from coming. Uh, it's not meant to, but um, I do try and encourage people to, 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 to think things through and learn things. And if there was something that I was giving you as homework this morning, it would be to learn that phrase, to learn that truth. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Right. I want to share some thoughts this morning uh, on that and on Psalm uh, 42. So keep Psalm 42 in front of you. Uh, let me get my notes up here. Okay, so well done on sorting out your clocks. Although of course, this is the easy way round, isn't it? Because if you forgot to change your clocks, you still weren't late. Whereas uh, that change of clocks that happens at a different time of year, if you get that one wrong uh, and you arrive at church, then uh, people realize that you've uh, made the mistake. But uh, the days now, they're getting darker and shorter. And it's not just according to the clocks, is it? But sometimes it feels like that in our spirits as well. The first pandemic wave that we experienced, well, we experienced a measure of loss, didn't, didn't we? There was increased anxiety as we entered that unusual, unfamiliar, unknown experience. Now, after what feels like a fairly emotionally draining six or seven months. Now we're in a second national lockdown in response to the second wave. Now we're more familiar with the ways and means of how we're going to cope with the consequences of what we're dealing with. Some of us, it means further change and disruption, uncertainty and anxiety. For others, almost no difference to the last few months. Now, I chuckle at this bizarre realization that last week, 
Anne and I weren't allowed to go shopping at our usual supermarket, our nearest Tesco store in Risca. And yet today, not only can we go there, but in fact, if we want to go shopping in Tesco, that is the one that we should go to because it's the nearest one to us. It all feels a little bit bizarre, doesn't it? Of course, there are much more significant changes taking place. There are more people losing their jobs. There is more uncertainty. And there's a real lack of fun, isn't there? We've, we've almost lost the joy in life. That's probably why it'd be great if you could make that tier fund quiz. That'll bring back a measure of fun and joy. I turned to Psalm 42 and I spotted this verse, verse 7. Have you got it in front of you there? Psalm 42, verse 7, talks about all your waves and breakers have swept over me. Feels a little bit like that, doesn't it? And we need hope. One way forward, of course, that is attractive to many and that fits a certain person's psyche is the analytical approach, analysis, study the data, data mining, as we used to call it when I was in the civil service. And I'd love to give, give you a little analysis of Psalm 42, because in this psalm, the writer speaks of longing for God's presence because he feels abandoned by God but hopes that God will come to him once again. So in verses one and two of this psalm, if you have it in front of you, you notice David's desire. It's clear he thirsts for God like a thirsty deer pants for water. But then his despair is also very clear. You get that in verse three and also in verses nine and ten. He feels abandoned by God. Do you see that in verse nine? Why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by my enemy? He feels abandoned by God and attacked by his enemies. So if it starts off with a desire, it admits a despair. And yet at the heart of this psalm, right in the middle bit, verses four to eight, is his determination. So you have done the preacher thing there, haven't I? I've done a bit of alliteration, desire, despair, determination. It's not just clever, it really is there. The character in this psalm is determined as he remembers God's goodness and rests in God's goodness. It ends in verse 11. Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. There's a simple analysis of Psalm uh, 42, and I hope that's helpful to some of you. I trust it will be. But can I be honest with you? Sometimes we want more. Sometimes we need more. Sometimes we need a testimony, a real life story. And my mind went to a person whose life story is extensively told in the Bible in what might be called a long read. It's a, it's a book in the Bible which would be fit for the chunky hardback biography section of your local library. Details of his life are recounted with brutal honesty, both in his own words and from the lips of friends, some of whom he likely fell out with. And yet, for all the words recorded in his life story, his name alone conjures up an image and an understanding of what he went through. Who am I talking about? Job. Yes, even his name, you see, conjures up an understanding of what he went through. And I think there are strong parallels in our pandemic-induced anxiety during this second wave need of hope. I think there are parallels between our experience and his, his experience of loss and pain. Like Job, we are discovering that we are no longer entitled to freedom, health, wealth and happiness. And like Job, our situation seems almost inexplicably to be going on and on and on. Like the irritating moralizers that are Job's comforters, I find that the constant critique in our media 
and sometimes of our media, and sometimes of the ignorant online conspiracy theorists, can actually just make things worse. And like Job, our minds are incapable of grasping the full meaning of what's going on. We need hope. Job was deprived of everything. Yet even in his despair, he never lost his belief that God was with him. Occasionally, there was an indestructible hope that burst forth like a ray of light in the darkness of his difficulty. Some of you will know this wonderful classic verse in Job, Job chapter 19, verse 25. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. But the truly transformative motive for Job came when, instead of in seeing his situation in front of God, he finally saw God in front of his situation. God reveals himself in a whirlwind, which we can read about in Job, the book of Job, especially the poetic speeches in chapters 38 to 41. There, Job encounters God, and God gives him a tour of the whole universe, its origins and the order and wonder and beauty of the cosmos. And there we read how God has his eye on every detail in his world. Even in the immensity of Job's pain and difficulty, the greatness of God eclipsed his problems. That's the revelation that we need. That's the hope that we're given. And yet our hope is even more concrete than Job's. I am absolutely thrilled of something that Jesus once said. Jesus said that he would send us help. Now, who of us hasn't needed help at some time? Who of us doesn't need help, perhaps right now? Jesus said he would bring help, send help, a helper, a holy helper, the Holy Spirit. The very presence of God for us, with us, in us. And the reality of that truth was recognised by one of Jesus's closest followers, John. Now, John encouraged a group of Christians by reminding them of these words. Remember those words that I asked you to highlight in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Let's dwell on that just for a moment. John was probably oldish in years when he wrote these words to encourage uh, a number of house groups, house churches. He was concerned about the difficulties and challenges that they were facing. And John was encouraging them to remain faithful, to stay true to what they believed, to remain faithful to Jesus. And these verses, verses one to six, that I, that I read this morning from 1 John chapter four, well, they're where John encourages the Christians, the believers, to be discerning, to be wise about false prophets and false messages, and to encourage people to love one another. The message, of course, was that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, God amongst us, for us, with us. This was the message. And this was a challenge to them because other people were seeking to deny it. So John encouraged them by reminding them of this wonderful truth, that he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Now, how does that apply to us in our specific context? Well, I just want you to really receive and grasp, hold on to and apply those precious words from 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. In our situation, in our here and now, we can boldly declare the one who is in us, the Holy Spirit of God, is greater than the pandemic that is in the world. Let me say that again, because that's my main point for us today. Greater is he that is in us than the pandemic that is in the world. Which is why we, 
can also have that same spirit that's mentioned in Psalm 42. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. This is the Saviour and God who came, was crowned with thorns, was nailed to a cross, was stretched out between two thieves, was forsaken by his Father, so that we would never be forsaken and never be rejected. And his resurrection from death overcame all so that we too can be overcomers. So what's that line for you today? Greater is he that is in us than the pandemic that is in the world. Let's pray, shall we? Gracious God, your word is profound and today helpful. The words of the ancient psalmist giving us real hope and an encouragement to put our hope and trust in you. And this line, this phrase, this statement in 1 John chapter 4, the thing that we will take from today, the thing that we can hold on to this week, its truth is wonderful for us. May it be an encouragement and a blessing to us in all that we seek to do. And may the glory go to Jesus. Amen. Love to be able to share with you uh, a great hymn of praise. It's one that I think you'll know, to be honest. And I reckon that uh, Emma will probably be able to play on her violin as she smiles to us uh, from her screen. So sing along wherever you are to this classic Stuart Townend. It's not often we get to be able to sing with Stuart Townend, but he leads us in the singing of this hymn. It's the hymn, There is a Hope That Burns Within Our Hearts. Sing along uh, wherever you are, would you?
I hope you enjoyed that folks it's an awesome hymn isn't it and uh, I hope that uh, that brought real blessing and comfort to you this morning well look we're uh, our time is probably up or at least my formal time um, I'll let you split into uh, um, what are they called oh, breakout groups that's right in, in a moment or two um, so you don't have to stay for those um, but uh, you're very welcome to do so I'll do my best to put you in a group of uh, maybe three or four folk and just uh, just catch up with them and chat with them and uh, do so for a little while. I'll leave the system running and uh, and you feel free to drift off uh, whenever you like. Um, the system tends to run for another 15 or 20 minutes, so you don't have to rush off, but, uh, but you're free to go whenever you'd like to. But uh, why don't we say the grace together? Uh, we'll unmute ourselves <clears throat> at that crazy moment where we we can uh, we can hear everybody uh, even if we can't understand everybody and <laughs> it's good to know that we're all together isn't it as we, as we say. so uh, you know the grace uh, it goes yeah. like this may the grace amen Amen. 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 It's been so lovely to see you all. Let me see if I can pop you into a little group if you'd like to do that. And uh, and you enjoy one another's company uh, now. Great to see you, folks. Great to see you, folks. Awesome. Awesome.